What up, dudes? I'm Kosol, your local dungeon master, and today we talk about homebrews. They suck. Don't do them. Ugh, fine. Homebrews are fun ways for DMs to show off their creativity. Unfortunately, most folk that do them have half a working brain and can't balance them to save their life. It's not your fault, though. You've been reprogrammed by Big Brother to overcompensate your items. Have you ever watched Pack Tactics or D&D Shorts? Balance. Balance! What's your thoughts on Reddit Homebrew? Balance. Balance! Is Adventure Zone your favorite D&D podcast? Balance. Balance! Hasbro's done nothing wrong. Balance. Balance! Why don't you repeat that three times for me? Hasbro's done nothing wrong. Balance. Hasbro's done nothing wrong. Balance. Hasbro's done nothing wrong. Balance. Congratulations. Enjoy your D&D sponsorship. When you're writing homebrews, you gotta be very careful. Players are like gold digging women that tell you that they love you, but in reality they just- It's a very fine line between balancing things and having super cool items or story moments. And don't you worry, I'm the premier expert on making random things up. You can trust me. I've never read the Dungeon Master's Guide. Let's go! Behold, the sword of a thousand truths. We must get this sword to the ones who have proven they have no life. Let's just hope to Christ they don't start the battle before we can reach them. All right, you guys, the moment of truth is here. It is time for our final battle. Oh, items. How much strife they've caused in my life. Homebrewed items are tricky, tricky little creatures, because one moment you're giving them a random bag, the next it turns out you miscalculated, and now they can end your campaign at level two. I'm going to use my arcane of fusion to turn his bag into another bag of holding and shove it inside <laughs> of mine. On the side of That's crazy, bro, trying to sacrifice your life <laughs> in the beginning. I still hate that little gnome. Most people are gonna gravitate towards items that give damage or make your players more resilient. Boring. Either you end up making an unstoppable beast that only goes down to magic missile, or the item is so lame you might as well have given them bigger blue balls in the end of Firefly. My little filly willy. I don't even know where to start. I just love you so much. And one day, I... I hope we could be together again. I recommend stealing one of your local stat blocks from an official source and just renaming it. Most official magic items have a rarity level on them, or at least they do in Pathfinder and D&D. Use that as a baseline to get an idea of how strong the attributes are on an item before stealing it. And if you really insist on making your own stats, just tell your party that you're a dirty little tweaker. You make changes to items as you play, and if they disagree, tell them to suck the appendage of your choice and go about your day. But let's get to the real meat of the homebrewed items. The pizzazz. The stardom. Kid, you gotta make something that puts a little pep in your player's step. Fact of the matter is, you make something lame, you might as well shimmy it up your doodle -doo and call yourself a Muppet. But let's say you're not the most creative person in the world. Well, not everything needs to be the one ring, okay? Make something goofy, make something funny. Hell, I gave my player a pet rock that scares him in places he wouldn't expect. It's his favorite item. I think. I don't know. I don't actually care about his opinions. Oh. Alternatively, you can combine different items that you find in the game and your players are gonna think you're cool as shit. Just never give them two bags of holding. <sighs> if you find out it can be abused in some way, give the item a charge. Once a week, twice a month, or the old Weinstein way with dinner at the Rockefeller. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't actually buff player items for sexual favors. That's uh... That's illegal. Some players will find uses for the most mundane of items. Others, well, they forget they have it in the first place. Oh, you fucking guy. So, treat the items like good shop stars that you can give out to your players. You don't want to shower them with too many things or give them too little they can't shine like the little butterflies they are. Give out your rewards appropriately. Got it? Now what are you doing? Get out of here and make me some more goddamn money, you suckers. Calling out all remaining Fortnite players out there. It is now time to choose. Either you're with me or you're against me. If I'm being completely real with you, I think homebrewing classes is way too much effort for what you get out of it. I didn't Damn, buy these price. expensive books just to not use them. Actually, I didn't buy them at all. You best start believing in ghost stories, Hasbro. You're in one.
But if you really feel the need to make a class, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Steal it from something else. Use other classes as a baseline for your new one. Or add wacky traits to an existing class that fits in with whatever narrative you are going for. Reflavor what you got? You want a brawler that doesn't use the monk's wacky chi points? Make them chi points into drunk points. Or something. I don't know. You just have to balance it in a way that doesn't make it seem like you're giving only one player the old reach around. Feel free to take away a few things, but not too much that the core identity of the class is gone. Honestly, I'm not the best person to ask when it comes to balancing these different classes. I don't do it. There's plenty of Discord groups or subreddits where you can ask other people for their opinions. I'm more of a go with the flow kind of DM, so I just live with my mistakes. Yeah, no funny meme here or anything, I just don't like like making new classes. I got other things to worry about, like taxes or this guy kidnapping me. I never said I was a nice guy. But I... The next words are yes sir, or have you forgotten? Yes sir. Oh buddy, I love encounters. You've got mimics, stealth missions, traps, gambling, impromptu dance sessions, all different types of things that you can use at your disposal. What I think most people do is slap a random fight for the party and call it a day. But your encounters can be so much more than that. You can use them as devices that push your story along or bully players if they annoy the shit out of you. This is where experimentation is key. See something that looks cool in a movie or a video game? Turn it into your party's next encounter. Nobody knows your players better than you. You gotta understand your friends and figure out what type of events will be entertaining for them to play through. They like memes? Give them memes. They wanna fight? Give them some cool mechanics that take place during a battle. They want more traps? Well, brother, we got a boatload of them straight from the motherland. At the end of the day, Ronnie, I am a man. A man who's gay. You like get that through your head. You're only gonna be using your encounters once, so if it turns out you messed up, you ain't gotta use it again. But let's say something turns out really bad. I mean, you brought in the divine hammer and you're about to team kill your party in 20 minutes. It's fine to adjust things on the fly, but don't get too used to it though. You don't wanna overrule the fate of the dice so much your players can't trust you. But overall, I am of the belief that there are many DMs that focus on the numbers, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like me, you just gotta let the pieces fall where they fall. Knowing your players is the key to creating a good session for your friends. As you play, you'll start to understand how their characters work. People tend to stick to certain ways of playing when they've done it enough, so it becomes easy to predict them. Build your encounters around this idea. It's pure instinct that you'll be working on to decide whether an encounter is going to be fun for your peoples, man. Allow your players to find creative ways to bypass your encounters because that's the whole point of the game. Just like how they adapt to your story, you've got to reciprocate and do the same for them. Unless they're playing a druid and want to turn into a bug or something. Then send in the bug spray! Let me tell you something, folks. When it comes to Dungeons & Dragons, I'm a big believer in planning. I spent, and believe me when I say this, I spent probably about three quarters of my time planning out diverse lore and characters. It's huge. But here's the thing, folks. You can't use them all. You just can't. Maybe like one one hundredth if you're lucky. That's what they say at least. Now, I'll tell you something else. Something very important. When you're crafting your lore, your characters, your NPCs, you gotta draw from real life. Or maybe fiction. That's right. You take what's out there, and you make it your own. And that's how you do it, folks. But here's the real kicker. You gotta start your players off in the action. That's right. Let them describe things. Let them make things up. The campaign world, it's theirs just as much as it's yours. Understand what I'm saying? Believe me. And finally, you gotta decide on the theme of your campaign. That's important. That's huge. You gotta have a theme. A big theme. You gotta make it- you gotta make it great again, folks. That's how you do Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, these are just a few ways to create your various types of homebrew. Experiment with a bunch of things and see what sticks. Uh, I'm gonna- I'm gonna be real with you. I don't have a good way of how to end this video, so... Look at these clips of me and my friend playing Tell Me Why, I guess. Like reading a fucking John Green novel.
What the fuck is she wearing? Look at that. Who the fuck would let their kid wear that? <laughs> what kind of fucking poverty ass toy is this? I hate to say it, but <laughs> actually love Lisa's future. <laughs> this is so those are the great planes. It looks like he grew a toenail on the top of his head. <laughs> oh my god, it's the Reese's Cup wrapper. 